Good morning. How is everybody doing? It is Tuesday, January 11th. My name is Zoe Baraka and you know what that means. It means that it is time for storytelling time on to my younger self. Today is an epic leap day. So I'm like jittery and excited. So please bear with me. For those of you who've been reaching out and saying, hey, where are you? Uh, we are so sorry. It's only been like 30 seconds. <laughs> As always, do me a favor, go into the comment section and, um, you know, just say hello, say what's up, greet me in your native dialect. Hi, Karibu, Karibu, Ryle, I see you. It is so good to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Please let me know that you're here if you're watching. Um, say something to me in your local dialect. We want to hear from you. All right, I'm gonna jump right in because we have a lot to cover today and I'm excited to introduce to you our next guest, okay? This is, it's so exciting. Okay, so listen, where are you, um, where are you, watching us from are you watching us from burkina faso i say bella to you bella to you ibio kibari to you if you speak moshi baraka da zua sanunku da zua ya ya de kako lafia i hope you slept well i am greeting you in the hausa dialect now ya ken ken for tuma tuma for duo wella tuma ah wella to pussy wunam baraka niti zam zam to you where are you watching us from la awane ansuma ansuma hogange songo I am greeting you in um, Kusal, Mampruli, Dagari, uh, Dagombad. I said Dasoba to you. I am greeting you in all kinds of languages from the northern part of Ghana. And Dina, to you, of course, if you are in the Volta region of Ghana, Wezo, Wezo, Wezo to you. Thank you so much for joining us. OJ Ko to you from the Ghana people of Ghana, um, those who live in the Accra area, you know this language very, very well. Are you in Nigeria? Ekaro to you, Ekaro to you, Ekabo, if you speak Yoruba. The uh, Igbos who say, Otutuoma, Otutuoma, Nabata to you, Emesiere to you, Emedio, if you speak the Ibibio dialect in Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. at to say, Akwaba. I am greeting God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Karibu, Karibu sana. Habari gani? Habari yasubue to you. Oyaure to you from the Lewis of Kenya. And of course, Murembe to you. Thank you for joining us. Awana from the uh, uh, the Mendes of Sierra Leone. I am so glad you are here. Mangwanani to you. Makadi to you from the Shona people of Zimbabwe. Linjane from the Ndebeles, of course, of Zimbabwe. Nagade to you. Are you in Senegal? It is so good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Inyase Aloy Domilaki to you. Uh, these are all languages from the Bissa people of Ghana. Kotong and Amohelang to you. If you speak Sesoto from the people of Botswana, of course, Akei to you. Now, my to you. And of course, Welena. Welena from the Hawaiians of, um, well, Hawaii. Duh. <laughs> Dumela from the people of South Africa. If you are in the Soto land. Sawabona to you. The Zulus will say Kotoli to you. If you speak Fulani. Bonjour. Guten Morgen, buongiorno, dobro otro to you if you speak Russian. Of course, bom dia from the Portuguese people of some parts of Africa and of course from Portugal and buenos dias. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is an epic day. I see you guys, I see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Beverly Ross, I see you. Ralia, I see you. Um, Francisca, I see you. Jane, I see you. Nabia Baumia, oh my God. Thank you so much. Another powerhouse. Hanatu, I see you. God bless you all. I am so grateful that you are here with us. I'm going to jump right into my introduction because today, first of all, do me a favor. I want you to go into Google and just type in Rudolf Walker. Okay, that's the only way I can start this introduction, only because it is so much that if I wanted to read everything, my brain would explode and your brain would explode. Let me introduce you to this amazing, fantastic, incredibly intelligent, can I call him a young man, even though I've been admonished, this is my grandfather, <laughs> Sir Rudolf Walker. 
He is a Trinidadian actor and activist. He began acting at the age of eight in primary school and um, went on to join the Derek Walcott Theater uh, workshop as the youngest member. With the aim of furthering his career, he left the island of Trinidad and uh, went into the UK at the age of 20. Now, mind you, that was in 1960. Okay. Um, Sam Walker's earliest television role was as a policeman in the British um, show The Wednesday Play. He is known for his comedic roles in Love Thy Neighbor, um, The Blue Line, which starred Rowan Atkinson, if you uh, ever watched Mr. Bean, right? And also in Ali G in the House, okay? Sarah Walker was um, also appeared in Doctor Who in the 1969 serial, um, The Game Wars, and also in several episodes of Empire Road in 1970. He was one of the first, listen to this, he was one of the first Black actors to be seen regularly on British television and so has always been proud of his role as the controversial Love Thy Neighbor character, which ran for seven years from 1972 to 1976. He appeared in the first episode of On the Buses, The Early Shift, and the first episode of Mr. Bean. If you watched, I, I laugh all the time when I see the show. And he was um, the examiner, or for those of you who live in London, he, he played the role of the invigilator um, in 1990. His other notable roles are as a barrister, as, as, um, barrister Larry Scott in the 1985 BBC series Black Silk. Although much of his work has been on television, he has appeared in several movies also, including 10 Rolling Play, well, Rillington Play, sorry, King Ralph and Let Him Have It. On the stage, Sarah Walker has also appeared in the first production of Mustafa Mutara's play Mass as the Royal Court um, at the Royal Court Theatre in 1974 and has played the titular character in stage productions of Shakespeare's Othello <laughs> and also Caliban in a production of The Tempest. He has also in, um, um, you know, lent his voice to British television, of course. Did you ever watch Teletubbies? I remember watching Teletubbies, okay, in which he re-narrated the opening and closing sequences for the American dubbed version and voiced some of the voice trumpets for both the British and American versions. Now, since 2001, Sarah Walker has played Patrick Truman, his most notable character to date in the BBC One television soap opera East Enders, okay, for which role he was voted Best Actor in 2002 at the annual Ethnic Multicultural Media Awards. And in 2010, he appeared in the internet spin off series East Enders E20. On his birthday, on Sarah Walker's 70th birthday, he launched the Rudolph Walker Foundation, whose aim include or aims include helping to provide opportunities and incentives for disadvantaged youths starting out um, in, um, on their entertainment career. The foundation admin administers won the Rudolph Walker's Interschool Drama Award, um, competed for by schools across London. In addition, um, they also award the role model, uh, Rudolph Walker's role model award, um, and is presented to the outstanding students who have contributed something special, like demonstrating positive leadership, a good influence to their peers and others, and a role model within the school. Now, Sarah Walker was appointed Officer of the Order of the British Empire, OBE, in the 20, uh, 2006 Birthday Honours for Services to Drama and Commander of the Order of the British Empire in the 2020 New Year Honours for Services to Drama and Charity. And now Sarah Walker also has the singular honour, at least my privilege also to be the only non-African African, he's going to correct me, non-African African to be on to my younger self. And today and forever, he remains my Gramps. We decided we won't go with grandpa. We're going to go with Gramps because he's so much more hip and he is not that old. It's just, you know, experience just lends him that name. And um, can I also say today's episode was specially produced, executive produced by our own producer, Yidana Kobigbela Hamid. Guys, with 
all of the joy inside of me, with all of the excitement inside of me, storytelling connoisseurs, ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. Let us give Sarah Walker, OBE, CBE, put all of the other descriptions there. Let us give him a wonderful, fantastic, amazing to my younger self welcome. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi, hi. You know, that introduction has made me very, very, very nervous. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh Grams, you cannot be nervous. This is not true. <laughs> well, I can assure you that I am because it's, uh, it, as I might have mentioned on previous conversations, um, I do very few uh, interviews. I do very few shut shows i tend to be very selective over the many years yes. um so when i am presented with something like this and with the sort of introduction i i <laughs> i don't know where to start <laughs> I, wish, I wish i could have done justice to this introduction honestly Grant. but um in the grand tradition of to my younger self i say over to you pops the show is yours oh. take us away <laughs> Blessings, blessings. And, and you know, I thank you very much for having me on the program. Um, you know, it is a fantastic uh, format to my younger self. Um, I, I listened and I watched one of the previous recordings and I think it, it's, it's just amazing. And I'm honored to be uh, the first Trinidadian to be part of the program. But I, I just consider myself an African. I, I, I always Again, have yeah. and always. <laughs> uh, I, yes, and if I want to be even specific, yes, I consider myself a Ghanaian, having visited Ghana on a few occasions, and I call it my spiritual home wow. uh, because of experiences that I, I, I had in, in Ghana. And I mean, straying away from my younger self just for a minute, I visited many years ago um takarali and and, and secondly um wow. i hope the pronunciation uh, uh, absolutely you did. right and one of the strangest and one of the strangest things that happened uh traveling in the car going towards there um i started describing to the my occupants and my host what was around the corner i have never visited that part of the world before and I kept saying, oh, when we get around the corner, we'll see this and there'll be a stand pipe here. And, then, and uh, it actually happened. Wow. And it was the most beautiful moment because I stayed with a lady, an aunt or wow. great aunt to the, my host, who must have been in her 90s. And I had a choice of either staying there or staying with one of the TV presenters. And I said, no, I'll stay with this lady. It meant that I had to sleep on the floor. And, it, and you know, it was so beautiful. And she said, I have no bar. If you want to have a bath in the morning, you get up, go to the standpipe. Here is a bowl. And you stand under the standpipe and you have a... And I said, fantastic. And there I was, and I, for your listeners, in my birthday suit, with a bowl and just throwing water on my body no one paid the slightest attention to this guy who was standing there <laughs> in his birthday suit oh my and, God. and when i finished i put the wrap around me and walked back to the the the, 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 the house oh wow and it was just it was so beautiful wow and and in a, in a way that brought me to my you know, my own upbringing, because at a very, very, very early age, I, I came from a single parent um, family. So I was brought up by my, by my mother, who <laughs> I, I, I conned the phrase. She was very Victorian in her, uh, in her parenting, i.e. that I, she would beat me for anything and everything. <laughs> Oh, it's a case of you had to behave. Yeah. You know, and I mean, it, there's a saying amongst my friends, all the boys, that I got licks for all the boys in the neighborhood. 
and, and sort of on reflection, she was a disciplinarian. Wow. And, and, and sort of in today's, um, in, in today's climate, the chances are that she, they might have had her up for, for child abuse. Wow. But, you know, I, I reflect and I say, well, you know, this is a product of her beatings. Mm. <laughs> you know, I, I am where I am today because of her. That's not that. But wow. back to the, the, the link between um, Takaradi. Yes, uh, you know, back to the link between Takaradi and my upbringing. I remember at a very, very early age, and I'm talking about maybe at the age of three, four, we had no running water, we had no electricity. So I got up at about four in the morning, every morning, with two buckets to go to the standpipe, fill it with water, and come back and fill the barrels. Wow. So before I did anything, before I went to school, before I did, that is what I, I had to do. Um, and in fact, I got up before all the boys because I wanted to get there, fill my buckets before the others did the same. I wanted to be ahead of the queue. Wow. But what it also did, there was an ulterior motive, even at that age, because especially during the mango season, when all the boys were fast asleep and all the houses were closed and still in darkness, I went round to all the gardens and all the backyards and the, the various and collected mangoes, the ripe mangoes <laughs> that fell off the trees during the night. So I ended up with a bucket full of mangoes. Wow. <laughs> so I, I I was the guy who was a youngster in the neighborhood who distributed mangoes that I choose. I kept the better ones for me, of course. Of course. <laughs> All my friends I would too. in the neighborhood. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, um, but doing that, I, I mean, it was it had a, a, an element of it had an element of danger because you're doing it in the dark, mm -hmm. <laughs> and sometimes it's through the rainy season, so you don't know where you're going to put your feet. Wow. <laughs> and sometimes you step in mud, you step in things that you, I don't want to describe over the, the, the air to, to the listeners. But the, I mean, most of them would know what I'm talking about, you know, where the, the wow. dogs or animals or whatever it is left their droppings and things like that. And snakes. But don't forget, they were, they were not poisonous snakes. But oh, you had really? to be aware of things like scorpions and centipedes. But wow. you, you ignore that as a child. You know, you, you did, did it of these mangoes and a certain amount of pride, you know, being. Oh, oh. our internet service uh, with Sir Walker being is the first and very... philosophy. And I also found, funny enough, that, you know, that I, oh, I also found that, um, that it was my best time for things. Thinking, hmm. my best time for being creative because at a very early age I started writing wow. poems yeah, and and doing things like that. And um, at four in the morning, uh, uh, I I was doing that, doing things like that, thinking. It was the best when even I here I am at this ripe old age and. Four o'clock in the morning, people said, you know, by the time you, if, you, if you're living in a cold country or you come to England, no, four o'clock in the morning, you want to stay. And even today, I am still a very, very early riser. Right. Wow. Riser. Wow. Extra lines. But, you know, even going back to, going back to those early days, I had an experience since I, you invited me on the program. I had a conversation with someone I, I grew up with. She was only about two or three years mm -hmm. younger than me after I left Trinidad only a few weeks ago, two or three three weeks ago, and uh, during the hour and a half, two hours of conversation, she said something that resonated with my whole career. She said, um, 
referring to me as Malcolm because my name is, is Rudolph Malcolm Walker. But people who I grew wow. up with refer to me as Malcolm because that's the name I used mm -hmm. growing up. And she said, you know, Malcolm, one of the things about you that I saw, I remember, is that you would gather all the kids around you. And I'm talking, I must have been at the age of eight. On the balcony of her place where she lived, which was just around the corner, in fact, outside where the stand pipe was. And you would just tell us stories. Wow. No, I... As she was about three years, yeah, I would have been about eight or there about or eight or seven. And I would make up stories and they would gather there just before they go and have their supper or whatever. And I would just tell stories. No, I have no memory of that whatsoever. I knew that I, you know, I loved performing uh, as a youngster. I knew that when I went to, to, to primary school, um, the, 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 the teacher there who was... Uh, the aunt of uh, my aunt-in-law, if if, if uh oh, um, Streamyard is doing something terrible today. Of all days, uh, hopefully, Sir Walker, can you hear me or see me? I hope that we're. You, or can the audience let me know if, you know, you can hear him because I can't hear him and he's frozen, which is really sad. Um, and those of you who pray, let's keep praying. <laughs> this cannot happen. Um, Gramps, can you hear me or see me? Uh oh. <sighs> okay. Well, um, can, can uh, you know, you guys go One ahead can and use that phrase, primary school. And every term here, me, uh, can you? Oh, Grams, now we only have a black Am screen. I uh -oh. still online? I think we have, now can you, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Um, it appears as though that I have being frozen out a little bit but now we can hear you uh, and see you too can you hear us uh can you um i don't know what is happening uh oh and our internet here says it's really really strong um, um Grabs, can you hear us i can see you and hear you. I can't hear what is going on. So okay. I just hope that you can. Wow. You can hear me. Our enemies are busy, eh? If you're from Africa, that's um, what we say. Grams, can you hear us? Okay. I our God is stronger. Our God is stronger. Dad, can you hear everyone us? Everyone can see and hear you. Yes. All right. I yes. saw the little note that's um <laughs> yeah. Uh, um back to the story. Sorry about that. Um the, that's okay, that little Grant. problem. But yes, yes, apparently I went to the teacher at the time and I said, Miss, um, Elfa Little Lamb is fleece as white as snow. But please, miss, can I have another letter? I, I was so keen. <laughs> on on um doing more wow. and, and this is in spite of the fact that i was told that i growing up i was a very shy youngster but put me on stage and for some reason i just you know I, I i just exploded and and that wow. is the, the story that um you know my primary school teacher told me many 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 years after i went back to the trinidad for the first time and she, of course she was still alive um uh she, i was still alive then so that was my early days um wow. in 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 um it, you know trying setting what should i say the the pathway towards where i i am today 
And having left primary school, I um I went on to, to elementary school or what here in England we call the comprehensive school. Mm-hmm. Um joined the the, the um, drama group and I saw their first show. And mind you now I'm at the age of maybe eight or, or, or nine, going from primary school or maybe seven. And we were looking at kids who were in their 15s and 16s. So then I became the youngest member of this um, uh, school drama group. And within about a year, 18 months, they offered me the lead. Wow. And first of all, in a Christmas show called We Three Kings. <laughs> and then that was followed by something called um, Papa Bois. No, Papa Bois is, uh, I don't know if for, for Afro, uh, for Africans, it's a man who rules the forest. I mean, it's laughable oh, no. that nowadays uh, Papa, we talk Papa about Leba Tarzan, who could yes. talk to all the, you know, Tarzan who could talk to all the animals, you wow. know, but we don't glorify our folk heroes mm-hmm. like Papa Bois in, wow. in, the, in Trinidad and I'm sure in the Caribbean who communicated with the animals. So they, I was offered this role ahead of a lot of the senior kids. And on top of that, whenever the, the teacher was unable to take rehearsals, uh, his name was Mr. Dyer, he said, uh, Malcolm, is it possible for you to take the rehearsals this afternoon? So there oh, I am right. at the age of maybe 10 or thereabout, 11 taking charge of youngsters who were senior to me wow. um, but you know I I, uh, I I did it and and w- in many ways was complimented by the you know by the teachers um so that was really the start of, of, of again of, of that sort of journey and I formed my own theater company at the age of 13. Or they're really? about, and I again. I had youngsters who were working, people who was my schoolmates, um, and performed at various venues. So at thirteen and fourteen, I was um, on the path of what was to become, you know, a, 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 a quite a, a an achievement. Wow! But you know, I, I again, I let let me, uh, you know, I got to go back because you, you know, my my younger self, and I talked earlier on about. A mother who Mm -hmm. was very very uh what should i say not dictatorial is not the word but she you know a very assertive a a very very proud woman i mean she would wear she would wear high heels sometimes to go to the market (laughs) always well dressed wow um just immaculate just immaculate but i wouldn't say that i she never cuddled me as a youngster, you know, and I never knew why. Um, hardly showed emotion, wow. um, which is something that I miss. And I try, you know, today and in later life to make sure that my children and my grandchildren um, don't miss out on, on, on that sort of cuddle. Now, I got cuddles from my, my aunts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my, you know, and the neighbors and the older generation, um, I was forever getting a lot of love and, and and cuddles. But from mother herself, and this is not to say that she didn't, she didn't love me because she she did things and she went out of the way to make sure I was okay. Um, but you know, on reflection, it must have been extremely tough for her, um, and her discipline really was of such that. I'd give you an example. I was surrounded at times by guys who gambled. Wow. You know, who were rough. You know, there was a good element as well. You know, the the guys who had strict parents. Um, But I remain friendly with everyone, regardless of their background, regardless of who they are, you know, whether, whether they went to jail, whatever, whoever, they are. I really, it was not to say that I would stop at the corner and gamble with them. No. But if I'm passing by and they say, look, Malcolm, you have a cent, you have a penny, and they're gambling. If I have it, yes, I'll pass it to them. 
not expecting them to give me back the penny or the cent in return. <laughs> but the guys, when they, just for a bit of fun, sometimes they would wait until I am walking by with my mother. And they know very well there is no way I can look left or right or say hello to them because I would get a clout. But they would wait until I'm going past and they say, Balcom, here's your scent. <laughs> oh, God. And of course, and they would chuckle and they laugh because they knew exactly what would happen. I would get a clout from my mother. And my mother would refuse to take that scent or stop me from taking back that scent or penny. Wow. And of course, it meant that they had money in their pocket. Um, and, and that, but that was the sort of environment and that's the sort of parenting that I, you know, that I had. Wow. I mean, my friends would say, um, you know, we'll all be pitching marbles in the back garden or playing cricket at a time when I shouldn't. Wow. <laughs> and for some reason, they had an antenna, a, a, antenna. My mother would be coming around the corner, and for some reason, they knew mother was coming. And to see my friend scale fence and disappear out of the garden and would leave me on my own <laughs> to clear up all the marbles. Wow. <laughs> they were literally scared of her. That's one phrase that I can use. Um, she had that sort of aura. Wow. Uh, uh, about her it, it was just it was just amazing she sounds very much but, like you know, a uh, mother you uh, know as i said but one of the problems that i'm having as we are going through talking mm -hmm. is that um i know that you can hear me can yes. you yes yes no i am you. having problems hearing very anything nice. that's going hearing you uh oh um not knowing when if you are interrupting oh um, there is a note saying um yes you can hear me so yes. shall i carry on yes please as best carry i on. possibly yes. Yes, <laughs> i'm sure this on. is there's always the first time same to me for rudolph walker i'm sure this is the first time that you're having a this sort of discussion and, the, the, and you can't hear or the person can't hear oh my your God. voice or hear what you're interjecting. So um, yes, maybe this is the first time. Yeah. But yes, back to my 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 life uh, as a uh, as a youth or as a youngster uh, growing up in Trinidad. Um, I there are so many little stories that I, I, you know, I, I keep hearing every time I, I pay a visit to Trinidad and I meet some of my old, you know, old colleagues, like someone um, said to me, um, sadly, he is no longer with us, but he, I played a lot of cricket for my school. And at one stage, the, 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 the teacher who was in charge of the, 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 the cricket, who ran the cricket club, said, um, I should consider um taking cricket seriously and uh, go on to represent trinidad and maybe play for the west indies um to me it was just a bit of fun i didn't um think of myself consider myself being uh, an, a, a, a cricketer you know it, it was fun and that but one of the things that um one of my the opening battle the guy who was more or less the vice captain uh, of the cricket team and again i'm going back to the age of 13 14 um he when he was alive and one of my visits to trinidad we were reminiscing about the old days and he said to me um you know malcolm we, we always all the kids in school always admire you i admire you he said boy you were bright you know <laughs> i said pardon he said boy man you are bright you know i said no i never considered myself bright i one of the things that I knew I did is that um, I had a way of doing just enough in school, in class, to get away from getting a hiding. Mm -hmm. So in other words, in that I would do enough. I would answer enough questions. I, would, I was never below a certain standard deliberately. But that wow. kept me out of trouble. But I never 
focus on the academic. The only thing that I was interested in was drama, maths to a degree, because I found that I was very good at working out sums, what we call arithmetic and, and mathematical problems and things that quick at doing that. Geography, parts of the world. Beyond that, I struggled. Wow. I struggled because I didn't I couldn't put the effort and the energy into it. I'd much rather read a poem or or, or rehearse for a play. And that is where my energies went. So when this colleague of mine said that, you know, boy, you were clever and I always had to come to you for help, schoolwork, that came as a total surprise. Um, wow. And, you know, I, it, it's, it's, it, it's just one of those areas in, 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 in my life that I sometimes think that could I have been... Could I have achieved a, a lot more if I had put that extra effort? Um, maybe not, but I am where I am today. I am who I am, having made the decisions I made then, and I have no, I have no regrets whatsoever. And this is something that I, when I talk to the youngsters in schools and various places, that you can't look back, you can't live by regrets you got to live for today and you have to live for tomorrow it's what you put in place today would affect what you're doing tomorrow the past wow. is the past and enjoy you know and look at the positives in, in in life and there are lots of positives that you know that i can take from um you know my childhood in trinidad um if i look back for instance at where i live or the house I grew up in, in today's standard, you would say it's a shack. Um, uh, but in those days, to me, it was a home, a beautiful home. It, it, there was one bedroom that accommodated um, a mother uh, and, and three children. You know, wow. there was just one sitting room. There was outside water and for... Uh, light at night, we use a, a kerosene, a kerosene um, lamp. Um, you know, mother was, um, she wasn't well off. In fact, had to depend on, on sometimes friends and the work that she did. She was a fantastic French polisher, so she depended on, on friends and family, well-to-do family, to um, give her jobs to polish her, her, their French table, their old-fashioned tables, and various wow. firms who employed her to do that. So there were many times when mm. Wow. Yeah, there were, there were many times um, when I finished school and I'm playing with friends after school. And there comes a time coming up to five o'clock and mother isn't around. Mm. And there was one particular family. In fact, it's the same mother of the, the lady who I said I spoke to a few, um, a yeah. couple of weeks ago. Um, beautiful uh, family. And she in particular, the mother was just adorable. So, and her husband, who was a, who was a headmaster teacher, and he was one to be feared, <laughs> to be quite honest. But the, the, the mother, and she would make sure It's okay, Gramps. Wow. Oh. Yeah, she in particular would make sure that when time come, when we are playing outside, and time come for her children, for them to have supper, she would make sure I have a shower with the boys, with her younger, I mean, they were younger than me. We would all have a shower together and make sure I sit at the table mm. and have something to eat. Yes. Until mother arrived. Wow. 
So, you know, at the time you don't, you, you know, you, you, you accept it. You know, you accept these, um, or the odd neighbor who would make sure that I wasn't hungry. Um, uh, mother never objected. Um, and it's a 50-50 chance as to whether when she arrived home, she would have um, enough to feed two of us because at that stage it was just, well, before my younger sister was born, she is about six or seven years younger than me. And then there is a third who was um, even six years younger. So I'm talking about the days before even before my, you know, I, when I was the only youngster I in, in the house. Um, yes, I look back at that with a, a, a certain amount of sadness, but also with a sense of, um, a sense of pride. Um, it, it, it was, uh, they say sometimes it takes a village to yes. bring up a, 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 to, to bring up a child. And certainly in those days, it was a village. Um, you know, I was aware of walking home from school, which nowadays I noticed the youngsters would jump in a taxi to um, to go to school. We walked. You know, we walked from. I walked from home to school, and um, and along the way there would be. You know, there would be neighbors. There'd people say, "Morning, Malcolm." Or I would say, "Morning." auntie not yes. my real aunt and that was the, the atmosphere in, under which i grew up and i i was aware there's no two ways about it i was aware and even when i look back now that i was well liked mm. and popular amongst the people around the older the, the, the older people in, 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 in the neighborhood it, it wasn't uncommon for me to for someone to call me after school on the way to school and say Oh, Malcolm, can you do this for me? You know, an old mother, an old aunt or, a, or granny, can you crawl under the, under the house and bring some, take out those eggs? I did it. it. There was never a problem. And sometimes I wonder why they call me and sometimes not the other boys, you know, <laughs> and not that I would really get pocket money from them. It's just that I did it. Mm. And it means that, you know, on the odd occasion, they would say, oh, are you hungry? Um, uh, are you on your way home? You know, here is a bake or here is this. Great. You know, wow. so I, I I was aware of, of, of what was happening around me. And I, I suppose it's the same thing in, 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 in many parts of Africa where, you know, um, you depend, you know, people help each other. You know, there is nothing common for a, a youngster to walk three, four miles to fetch water. Yes. You know, it's so, I didn't walk those many miles, but it, it's the same thing. So hence the reason why I said, when I went to Ghana, uh, how I felt so much at home, you know, very much at home. Uh, and the element of the, for instance, the, 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 the elementary school I attended, all the teachers were Afro-Trinidadian, Bar one, and that wow. one was a headmaster. He was Indian, and I had the greatest respect. In fact, we all had respect for him. He was a disciplinarian. I mean, we had this this thing about you. School started, let's say, seven thirty. You don't arrive seven thirty one. Without an, a letter from your parents saying, I am one minute late. <laughs> and, and that is, and that is not, that is exactly what he was like. Because what would happen is at 7.30, he would ring a bell. Wow. And don't, now this school, outside the school was an open playing field. And when he ring the bell, you stand one place. You don't move. If you're on the street, you stand still. The thing is that no cars is going to knock you over. Mm -hmm. You stood still. 
and he would survey the whole area. Wow. Then he would ring the second bell and you make sure you get in line in the school compound and you stand as your class, you know, in a row. Mm -hmm. And then he would look around and ring the third bell. And the teachers would come out and inspect your fingernails, and your, your, hair. your clothes. Wow. There were kids who were poor, who couldn't afford shoes. Make sure your feet are clean. Wow. And once that inspection is finished, the next bell into your class. Now, all this time, he is standing on the top of the stairs, looking over the entire area. Mm. Wow. And wow. he would wait there for about five minutes or so. And I'm telling you that if you arrive, because you may be the only figure hurrying down the road, you can bet your bottom dollar you are going to get a flogging. <laughs> to, so punctuality <sighs> became my middle name. There are so many times with you realize because none of us had watches. Mm. But yes. you have a sense of when it's one minute to go. And I mm. became a sprinter. A lot of us became sprinters because we made sure we ran the, the 15 yards or the 100 yards to get within the school compound in time mm. for that first bell. Wow. So, so that, in a way, that in a way, that's kind of set me up for later life, going to, you know, coming over to the UK, being disciplined enough when I had, um, you know, within the theatre, because there's a certain amount of discipline that you have to, yes. you, you know, adopt. You, you know, you can't afford to arrive late for rehearsals. So all these these little things, as small as they are, kind of set me up in a way for for wow. the life that I am living now. Yeah. Wow. So that was, those were sort of just one or two little highlights of, 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 of what it was like um, growing up as a, 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 as a youngster in Trinidad. Uh, you know, things like the steel band, steel pan. Um, I'm sure it's now become such an international um, instrument. Um, but in growing up in those days in Trinidad where the pan was, a, a, the steel pan was invented, um, it was associated, funny enough, with boys who gambled. So for instance, there is no way my mother would allow me to play the steel pan uh, at an early age. Although I, I love the song of it, I, I love he hearing it, I, but there is no way. So that was only associated with with bad boys. Wow. So she, she just wouldn't and which was a pity because I, I even at my ripe age, I still I still long to to, to play the the, the, the the steel part. I still marvel at the steel orchestras that travel the world and play places like the Carnegie Hall and the Royal Albert Hall here in the wow. in, 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 in the UK. Um I am blessed to have had, um, you know, she's no longer with us, um, a cousin by the name of Pat Bishop, who became uh, fantastic as a, as a steel band arranger, uh, orchestra arranger, and has taken the, her, 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 her groups, all parts of the world. And so what I, what I missed out on, at least I have a cousin who celebrated and who was able to, to do what I was unable to, what I was unable to do, but it, it, it's um, it, it's yeah, the, the the life in 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 Trinidad in those early days when I when I reflect when I reflect on the 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 the, the discipline when I reflect on the on on the the how I grew up I I. When I talk to youngsters today and, and they talk about single parents and they talk about um, the, 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 the violence that surround them, in a way, I, I recognize it. 
and I can say, yes, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to um, to have a single parent. I know what it's like to share a bedroom with your mother and your two sisters. I know what it's like to 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 have all those things. I know what it's like to be to to you know having to fend for yourself at times. Um, but the, the the sky is the limit. Mm. Um, that is not a reason for not achieving. In fact, it should be the driving force to propel you to achieve great things. And you don't have to come from a privileged background. You don't have to come from a well-to-do family to achieve. And this is not knocking uh, being um, critical of people who are well-off and who are privileged. No, this is saying the world is everybody's oysters it is yours and, and regardless of which part of the world that you are from whether you're from africa the caribbean india wherever you're from here in the uk the the areas where we are being targeted at the moment the brixton the the manchester the notting hill hey, each and every one of us in each and every one of you have the opportunity to be a barack obama to, to, yes. to, to be uh, a Muhammad Ali, to be a Nelson Mandela, to be to be great men and great women, you, you know the Oprah Winfrey. You, you know you you everything is achievable. Mm. Wow, wow. <laughs> and, Gross, I don't and, know. And, and I I hope in in a way that um that that I I have been able in in some way to to just impart just a little bit of, of of what my life was like and i'm sure when we finish this um this podcast that i would think of a million and one things that i should have said, <laughs> said and, yes. and i should have elaborated on um wow. but who knows that um there might be at some stage in the near future where you know your listeners can um invite me to to, to sit and, and and talk to them and and and, and be questioned um, yes. and especially from uh, you know my colleagues and my brothers and sisters who are on the african continent uh, i would love to share you know our experiences um i there is a very strong possibility I think it's more or less 80 or 90 percent certain that I'll be visiting Ghana at the end of February for about three weeks. And my plan is to go on to Gambia that I've never visited before going back down to the Caribbean. Um, visiting Ghana at this point in time is a must for me. Wow. I just want to retrace a lot of places that I went, like Takaradi and Sekundi and, and Kumasi and Accra and all these other places and that I, I just want to see again. Wow. Wow. Um, Grumps, I don't know if you can hear me, uh, um, but I, uh, I've, I've tried very I, hard to... Uh-oh. Can you hear me now? Oh, how, ex how extraordinary. Um, suddenly, I pulled, took the earpiece that I was using all along and I could hear, took it out and now I can hear you. Yes, I was thinking that must have been the problem, but then I didn't want to, you know, break the streak. You were in the in the flow of the story that I really just wanted you to keep going. So I just kept quiet <laughs> and let you run the show because, you know, this show has been incredible. As you were telling the stories, I kept saying, oh, my God, I could have grown up in Trinidad. I had a mother just like he had. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I kept thinking my father could have grown up in Trinidad. He went to school and walked for miles, you know, to go mm. to school. Um, just so many. Uh, I took a shower uh, out in the open <laughs> in my birthday suit yeah. <laughs> yeah. when I was Which younger. Is, uh, it's just the, the so amazing. Thing that you the, the sad thing, you can't do that now with modern technology because everyone is traveling with an iPhone or a yeah. phone that will take 
and uh, I think the publicity would be horrendous if I am <laughs> quoted Takarani doing exactly yes. what I did many years ago. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Gramps, this has been, I'm telling you, the chat room is blowing up. It's ridiculous. I couldn't even go through to read any of the comments because. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to just pick and choose. Um, um, Seti says we were set up to be resilient, adaptive and resourceful. We didn't realize it at the time, though, which is very, very true. Someone, um, Auntie Doris here says Trinidad and Takarati twin places, which is true, right? The T and the T. <laughs> And the tea, yeah. Yes, tea and the tea. Um, our our very uh, very very august producer, um, Bixis Elsie. She says, discipline, respect for elders, community living, hard work, and resourcefulness. Um, this is what you are made of. Pastor Casper says, Mr. Walker, I feel you. My primary head teacher was from India too, and the discipline she has her hand up on her head in an emoji. <laughs> <laughs> um, the comments are just crazy and ridiculous and it resonates with each and every one of us. Jemima, thank you so much for joining us, my dear. She says the village we were surrounded with growing up um, um, has disappeared or expired. Very sad. Everyone was your auntie, mm -hmm. uncle. And, you know, she misses the atmosphere of, of walking from school. It's no longer a safe village for our children, which is true, yeah. not in that sense, to be honest. These days, you just can't take, tell your kid to just go to school um, walking. And it's so true, Gramps. Um, you know, when I first got on the phone with you, I started to call you uncle. And my father, <laughs> when I was telling him about this, I said, oh, and this person, and, you know, you should Google him. And, you know, my father came back to me and he said, but that he is not your your uncle. <laughs> and he put me straight right away and said, no, no, this man is more than your grandfather, not because of age, but because of experience and where he's been. Mm. And there's a spirit that is on certain people that you just can't even call them uncle. Um, <laughs> you, you just have to call them grandfathers. Um, because there's no other, you know, if there was another stage above grandfather, then I would give that to you. But there's no other, you know, stage in 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 in, in the sense of wisdom and, and experience. And oh my God. And guys, let me tell you, right from the beginning, Sir Walker did not say, go talk to my agent, go talk to my manager. Uh, let's see if we can fit you in. He has treated me as though I was his own child, his own grandchild. And I, I, I can testify to his promptness. When we said two o'clock for a dry run, let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> it was 1.58 and he's, he does not wait for you to reach out. He would call me himself on video and say, Hey, honey, what is going on? Hi, sweetheart. For him to even give me those endearing words, I can't tell you how lucky it feels. No. Um, this morning, he was the one calling and saying, is it time yet? At 7.20, this is the discipline he's talking about when he says he, he, would, he still wakes up at 4. I remember my dad, he still wakes up at 4, too. And I now wake up at five thirty because of boarding school. Let me, <laughs> uh oh. And, and and Grams, we have a name for you now. Unto my younger self, he's the Grio father, the wise man of the village who gathers people under the barbuck tree to tell stories. We have given you the name unto my younger self. From now on, you shall be called the Grio father. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and Grams, we are going to extend this invitation to you. Whenever you are in the U.S., we're definitely getting a sit down with you. And um, we cannot wait to have a sit down with you in person, in a studio and having a good conversation and having storytelling time. Well, that's something that I would look forward. I would make a trip to to, to New York, maybe just to do that. Um, oh my God. <laughs> you never know. You never know. You never know. You never know. Oh um, my God. I haven't, I haven't been to the States. I have a sister who lives in, in the States. 
uh, out in um uh, out in um uh North Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, mm. who I haven't seen for quite a long time, and I have a cousin who live in New York. Uh, um, and uh, but they have been asking me to come out and visit. And as I said, the last time, I mean, the very last time that I was in the States, it was to celebrate. I had an invitation to um, for Maya Angelou's, the late Maya Angelou's fantastic woman, 80th birthday. Oh, wow. And I was invited out. And the reason why, uh, you know, I brought, that was the last time I visited. So that's quite a long time ago. Yes. Um, and one of the, 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 the strange thing is on my very first visit to Ghana, the very first visit, I was talking to a journalist. And uh, she said to me that Maya Angelou was out here fairly recently, I'm talking about that, that period. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that a lot of the places that she visited, because you know, she loved Ghana. Yes, she really it, did. It, she really loved Ghana. And I realized unknown to me, unplanned, that there are many places that I was visiting and my experiences were almost similar to that of the, the, the late Maya Angelou. Wow. And I know that I, as I said, I know that I, I love the place. I, I just love Ghana. The minute I arrived, I did one of the most extraordinary things. And it's something that the, you know, you see pictures of the Pope arriving at a country and getting down on his knees and kissing the earth. I did exactly the same thing. Oh, my I, God. On that first visit. Wow. And I mean, it, it, it was a strange story too, because um, I was going on to, to, um, to Nigeria on that first visit. It mm. was Ghana, Nigeria, and then back to Ghana, where I would spend um, about two or three weeks. And uh, everything, as far as flight is concerned, went wrong. The flight was very late in leaving London, Heathrow, and I mean very late in leaving. And it seemed as though, it, and I think it was, I think it was Nigerian Airways. Mm. But whatever happened, it meant that we were late. And when we arrived in Accra, it was too late to fly on to, to Nigeria. Nigeria. Wow. And nothing appeared to have been organized. Uh, at the airport, absolutely nothing. Nobody knew what was happening. This whole plane load of people who were going, some of, a lot of them were going on to Nigeria. We had no idea whatsoever what was happening. So we were there on the plane. Then they, they took us all out, um, came off the, the aircraft, and that is what I did. Wow. Kissed the ground. Here I am. And then we were put into this holding area waiting for news what and, and the time just went by and eventually they said um okay we are going to take you to a hotel now bear in mind there were children there were pregnant women they were you know oh. older people no and nobody knew what was happening and your hum and i think it was mommy wagons mm. they brought to wow. take us to this um the hotel I took it upon myself to organize everybody to make sure I I did it to make sure that the women and the children went on board first. Hmm. Wow. I, I mean, people just, people listened. I mean, I must have been one of the younger guys in the group, but for some reason, I just took over and said, no, 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 you go. And once the whole lot, you know, people when there were several mommy wagons um, arrived, um, and I eventually got on. And 
I can't remember what time of the night that was, but we were sharing that with people who were either going to the market. No, I don't know the geography of what was happening. I, mm. I didn't know where we were, where we were going. All I knew that at some stage that the, the guys had problems turning around or turning the vehicle around to go there. So there are some of us saying, no, no, don't go any further. You know, there's a ditch or there's a hole. Um, but fun, the strange thing is that I felt at home. Oh, my God. I wasn't angry. I wasn't. People were getting uptight. You know, guys were getting annoyed. I felt at home felt relaxed. We got to the hotel and I gathered one or two of the guys and we sat down, we told stories, we had jokes until we were really, really tired. <laughs> wow. And, then went to bed. and once again, I got up early in the morning. By then we didn't know what was happening. When the flight was, eventually we got word that the flight was arranged for. And once again, I made sure all the all the women and all the children got on the first set of our mommy wagons that arrived and then we got to the airport and some of us who had to travel went on to Nigeria. Wow. And then you came back. And then I came back. <laughs> and, I, and coming back, I was staying. And again, this is again, it's why Ghana holds such a special place for me. Wow. I stayed with a family, the Busbys in Accra. Mm. Now, Dr. Busby is a Trinidadian, or was a Trinidadian, of course, sadly, he's no longer with us. He was one of the early doctors who trained here and went to Ghana to do, rather than practice here in the UK and other parts, he decided to go to Ghana. So he was a contemporary of the Nkrumah, the late. Uh, um, oh, Kwan Nkrumah. Wow. Kwan Nkrumah. And together with people like Padmore, who has a great history in Ghana mm -hmm. from the Caribbean. Yes. Yes. And a lot of noticeable, notable, notable um, West Indians mm -hmm. were part of that group of people who helped to, what should I say, assisted in, in building. Ghana, the infrastructure, yes. the, the health yes. service. Um, and I stayed with him. Wow. And, and he took me out to villages that he, when he was practicing, he would get a knock on his door mm. and uh, to call, call him by one of the chiefs in the village to come and look after, see uh, the wife or his children. And he would, his little bag, would walk oh. from a mile, two miles or whatever, into the into the into where area, tend to the kids and walk back because those were the days of no um you know no 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 Private transportation. Cars, no yes. and stuff. Wow. Um, so I would I that's the house I stayed in. That's the family I stayed in and we remain good friends until today. Um wow. and the stories were just amazing. His, his experiences and and, and, and things like that. He was married to a Ghanaian. Um, it, it's, as I said, I'm part of the, being part of the family. Um, so, uh, so, yes, Ghana holds that special place in my heart. Oh, I am so sad we have to go. It's an hour, eight minutes, and I'm just thinking, do we have to? <laughs> 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 but I know, Gramps, you've got scripts to rehearse and other, um, you know, um, engagements that you have to go to. So we're going to be gracious and 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 and, and say, please, we do need you to come to the U.S. because now you have a grandchild here, so you absolutely <laughs> must visit. Um, <laughs> and, Oh, it would be such an honor. Oh, my God. I cannot wait for all of that. I really can't. Guys, has this been good? <laughs> it has been so good. Um, the internet critters tried to get us, but you know what? Like true Africans and like true Trinidadians, like true um, people of the Caribbean descent, we persevered and we stuck to it and we got a good conversation out of it. This is indeed truly a, a, an experience under the Bobak tree. All we're missing is some, you know, darkness and moonlight, you know, 
um, we have really, I personally, I have really drunk out of your wisdom, Gramps. And I am so thankful that first you said yes in humility. First you said yes without any clout. When I tell you guys, there is no clout about this, my grandfather, I am not lying. There was no, I called him the first time he was in a car and he picked up and said, he, the way he called my name, it was as though he'd known me before, you know, and that was till date. You don't get that anymore. It is so rare. And I cannot say thank you enough, Gramps. Thank you for coming on and being so gracious to us. And um, I, I, I want to introduce the next person for next week, but I'm just kind of like, I can't <laughs> even do that. So how about you just join us next week or go to the Facebook page um, and the, we were we, uh, on, on the Twitter page, on the YouTube page and just see who is coming on next week because I, I feel like I should not even try to, to, to end this with another person's name. It's just not going to be possible. We're going to end it with Gramps. So Gramps, we always um, give our guests the last say. What would be the last absolute thing if this was um, the last thing, you know, anyone would ever get to hear from you personally on this page? Because I will get to hear from you every week, but... <laughs> Um, what would be the last thing you get to hear from them? Um, they, they, they get to hear from you. What would be the last thing you would say to them? Well, the last uh, quick thinking, I would say, enjoy each day. Mm. Laughter is the best recipe for good health. Wow. And with with laughter comes togetherness. With laughter comes love. Mm. With laughter comes respect. Wow. Wow. So laugh. Wow. Wow. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go and give our closing credit and, you know, just say um, goodbye in a, in, a, in, a, in a nice, timely fashion. Gramps, I know you don't, don't leave yet. We're going to play our, our closing credit and then um, we're going to close properly. It has been such an absolute honor, guys. My name, as always, is Zoe Baraka. And today I have had the honor of sitting under the tutelage of Sir Rudolph Walker, my grandfather and your griot father, okay? Um, <laughs> I will see you again next week, telling stories, making memories, and, and, and living life to the fullest, like griot father just said, okay? All right, guys, let's take it away. Bye-bye, and we love you. We love you dearly. See you next week. Me